afternoon aditi uh, good afternoon ma'am how are you ma'am i'm fine thank you ma'am and where are you right now where is these goals and dreams and everything ma'am i am in my Har uh, haridwar uttarakhand at my home place haridwar uttarakhand all right <laughs> what has happened very women friendly thing has happened in uttarakhand today what is that Uh, sorry, sorry, ma'am. Don't read the papers. Time. You have the first lady chief secretary. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. First lady chief secretary of Uttarakhand. Her husband used to be DGP a couple of years ago. All right. Now, um, I will refrain from asking Uttarakhand right at the beginning, which is my first love actually, and go to something else, or maybe I will start. Uttarakhand is going to pass the UCC on fifth of uh, the coming month. Right? Are you aware of that? Yes, ma'am. What are the contents of that? What is in? What is out? Ma'am, as the UCC stands for the Uniform Laws governing the personal matters like marriage and inheritance. No, no, no. So, that we know. But uh, you know, there have been hints like tribes will be kept out of it because they are special customs. It will be gender budget friendly. But what things are in and what are out? Do you know? I'm not asking theory of UCC. I'm asking you, do you know what, what, which elements are they taking up in the UCC or not? Apparently, they had a consultation and got something like two and a half lakh responses which they have taken into account. That is what I hear. So, do you know? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I am not aware of the specific points which have been excluded okay. and they included. We'll, we'll leave it at that. But uh, time will tell on fifth. Then you should prepare it well. Now, there's this famous Ibelkis Banu case. Have you been following it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what is the latest uh, court order or the latest development in this matter? Uh, yes, ma'am. According to a uh, Supreme Court order, the remission given to the convicts of the Bilkis Bano rape case have been revoked and they've been asked to go back to the jail. What are the grounds? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, since uh, the order was passed by the Mumbai court, uh, the, uh, the acquisition and the conviction, uh, hence the Gujarat government to give remission to the convicts uh, was found to be unjust and unfair by the uh, Supreme Court. And hence, uh, the fair uh, fairness in the justice has been established. How much of a term had these people served? Uh, Ma'am, they have served more than 14 years. Mm -hmm. So now the, the ball is, is in the court of the Maharashtra government, right? What do the Maharashtra government rules say on this matter? Crimes as heinous crimes against women like this, what do they provide for in terms of remission, consideration of remission? Because that's going to be the next step. Yes, ma'am. They are going to uh, approach the Maharashtra government and according yes, to yes. the... What um, are the rules of the Maharashtra government in this matter? Uh, yes, ma'am. In the crimes, uh, the accu accused must have served at least 14 years. But in the heinous of heinous crimes, uh, the, uh, the remission could be denied to the convicts. No. What are the rules of the Maharashtra government? How many years? You need to read up. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You know, I read another article in the newspapers regarding Uttarakhand, which is very, uh, I don't know what to say, my reaction. Four madarsas are going to start teaching about Ram. Have you heard had that, read that news item? Yes, ma'am. So what are your reactions to that? Ma'am, it's a very positive approach. Uh, to give a very secular education in which all the ideals from various religious dominations are taught to children belonging to various different uh, relig religions. It's only Muslims being taught about the Hindus. Why should then we not be taught the Quran? Uh, Ma'am, we are taught about the Muslim ideals such as the Sufi movements. You've been taught the Quran. Sufi movement is not the same as the Quran. Or about, uh, uh, about Allah or about Prophet Muhammad. It's not the same. No? Uh, yes, ma'am. We are not specifically taught. But uh, in my humble opinion, uh, there's unity of God. And God stands for the... Uh, no, no. All that is God. all very well. Then they don't have to talk about Ram. They can talk about God. Anyway, these things should be considered before being replied to. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing that comes to mind about Uttarakhand, I'm sorry, I can't resist is this whole business about the desecration and destruction of Uttarakhand, the environment completely going. And the villains of the peace are the Chardham Highway. We were talking about religion just now. And the widening of that road, which was fine in any case, and now it's a massive rubble. 
Hmm? And mm -hmm. also all these various uh, um, hydro and other works being done, plus indiscriminate construction activity. Now, what three specific steps were you would you take? Were you in charge of things? Uh, Ma'am, the first would be the environment impact assessment. The technicality technicality involved. Very in good. So now the impact assessment has been done, and the impact assessment says carrying capacity exceeded. Now what will you do? Ma'am, the enforcement of the uh, reports. For example, in the Silkara tunnel, there was a rescue tunnel to be constructed, which was. Uh, that's a small item. That's a that's that's a that's a diversion, shall I say? Fundamental point is, it says that now carrying capacity is exceeded. What will you do now? Uh, Ma'am, since the carrying capacity has been exceeded, we should go for the green infrastructure involvement and uh, retrofitting what, what, of the what green infrastructure. Uh, Ma'am, like uh, going for the afforestation along with the development of the roads. And when the road uh, is being made, how can you afforest that area? Everything will come down. I mean, the, see, the questions way. are going to be: Will you? stop the construction of the road or do as is where is just little, little incremental stuff? Will you limit the number of tourists coming into Uttarakhand? Will you stop all building activity except essential repairs and renovation? These are the three things that come to my mind. Wh which of these three will you do, if at all? Ma'am, we have to uh, take a comprehensive approach. That's why I'm asking. Uh, these three specific questions, what would you say? Yes, ma'am. A tourist footfall has to be uh, rationalized where the footfall uh, going there. You no, know, my English is poor. I don't understand rationalized. Uh, ma'am, we have to minimize the number of tourists uh, traveling to Uttarakhand on a particular day. Have you an idea how many travel today? Mm, so sorry, how many would you say should be? Okay. What uh, else? Uh, Ma'am, secondly, uh, as various committees, such as MC Mishra committee has pointed out that uh, instead of blasting uh, the, uh, the rock uh, structures, we should go for a uh, small scale uh, uh, destruction of the uh, the ge geological uh, structure so that. Uh, what does a small scale mean? They would do with pickaxes. How will they break it? How will they break the rocks? I'm not. I'm not aware for the technical term, but there has. No, no. To they're be actually a... blasting it. I've seen with my own eyes. Last yes. year, I'd gone to some of these areas, uh, but uh, what will they do instead of blasting? What will they do? I mean, it's a it's a problem which has. The solution is being sought. Uh, Ma'am, uh, like human uh, handmade uh, process could be involved. Instead That's what I was asking, will they do scale. pick access? That has its own implications. All right. What do you consider the best use of IT? In India, and over the last few years, we've had a lot of um, uh, uh, applications of this in real life. So which do you consider are the most important? Say three. Tell me the three most important and why. Um, sorry, ma'am. I could not understand. Three most important IT. Uses of IT. IT. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You are a computer science person, aren't you? From Bitspilani? Yes, ma'am. So what do you think has been the most practical applications in the last couple of years? There's been a lot of push towards that direction, right? Yes, ma'am. Last 10 years. Yes, ma'am. The first would be uh, in the defense manufacturing. Uh, the use of IT, for example, the drone technology. Uh, mm -hmm. Second would be uh, government push towards a digitization in the form of e-governance. Uh, and the third would be use of IT in the social sectors such as education and healthcare and agriculture. Be specific. Give three exact examples. Education, uh, so healthcare many... is very vague. Yeah, you're and, on the right uh, track. There's something very, very yes, significant. It just jumps out. Uh, yes, ma'am. In education, uh, I would say about the uh, Nista and the Nista uh, technology or the uh, swap, uh, Swam Prabha portals uh, the, for the e-education and in healthcare, I would say about the digital, Ayushman Digital Abhihan, uh, which is providing for the comprehensive healthcare system. Thank you. Thank you, Aditi. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, Aditi. Good afternoon, sir. There is a lot of talk these days of one nation, one election, or simultaneous elections, what they call. What do you understand yes, by these terms? Number one. Number two, whether it is possible, suppose hypothetically we uh, presume that it is adopted, 
we go for one nation, one election. Can we do it under the present constitution? So one nation, one election stands for the simultaneous elections held for the uh, parliament and the state legislative assemblies uh, at one point of time throughout the nation. And uh, since uh, it is being uh, debated upon by a committee and have, if it's come into place, uh, it, is practic uh, it is practical, but uh, few amendments have to be brought in uh, in the constitution, such as Article 83 or uh, 174, which uh, deals with the, uh, the term and the composition of the uh, parliament or the state legislative assemblies. You said state legislative assemblies, perfectly right. On the other hand, you say parliament. It's Lok Sabha. It's, it has to be Lok Sabha because yes, there's no such elections for Rajya Sabha. Hmm. Yes, sir. Fine. Thank you, sir. Fine. Uh, now, you have recently, the government has appointed a new finance commission. Yes, sir. Can you tell me which is the, uh, you know, what is the number of this finance commission? Because every five years, a new finance commission is appointed. So the, this is the 16th finance commission. And who is its chairman? Uh, so as much as I can recall, Arvind Panagriya. Uh, okay, good. Yes, good. Um, tell me, uh, which are, just tell me two, two major factors which go into the decisions of any finance commission. Two parameters, important parameters, which they take into account while deciding how the taxes would be distributed between center and state. Uh, so the first would be the population parameter of the state. Uh, like in last census, uh, in last uh, fifth commission, the 2011 population was involved. The second would be uh, the uh, income distance from the state's GDP, uh, state's as GSDP, GSDP uh, from the highest performance performing state. So there is certain states have objected to the criteria for population. Yes, sir. What is the objection? So the objection, uh, the mainly objection is from the southern states of India, which believe that their population control efforts are uh, becoming a disadvantage uh, based on the proportional of finances devoted based on this criteria. Now you are a computer scientist. Now uh, there is... <clears throat> Suddenly, the artificial intelligence machine learning has been unleashed. Everybody is talking about it or debating it. People are using it. Maybe you are also using it in a some manner. Uh, do you think artificial intelligence needs a regulation? Or it should be allowed to progress the way it is? Uh, yes, sir, it needs regulation, uh, seeing the disadvantages associated with the misuse of technology, and hence a soft approach is needed, which balance the innovation as well as regulation. What are the pitfalls of artificial intelligence, which we have seen so far? Uh, so there are many pitfalls, such as the deep fake technology, which is being used. Uh, which is being used to distract the democratic processes, uh, such as election during election campaigns. Second would be uh, the technology being used uh, used to uh, to outrage the women's modesty uh, and defamation. Uh, so third would be use of artificial intelligence, uh, uh, such as Chat GPT, uh, which which has uh, taken the various jobs uh, like the, uh, there's a destruction of employment uh, in the country. Uh, due to adoption of AI, and fourth would be the digital divide created uh, due to use of technologies, including AI. Has AI already led to loss of jobs, or it is it will be happening in future, if at all? Sir, it has put strain on the jobs, the demand for jobs, and there is considerable decline in the number of people. Uh, being uh, demanded by the country, uh, like companies such as content writer, because that has been automated. 
so there is decline and if the skill development doesn't take place with the adoption of technology there there will be more decline in future as well the same thing was said when computers were introduced they said jobs will go away people will become redundant in offices everything will be done by computer but the reverse happened sir as uh, seeing the momentum of the uh, adoption of technology uh, the steps were taken for uh, simultaneous skilling of the population so that they can get uh, used to uh, on working with the technology and hence uh, the decline in the job uh, could be sustained now there is a uh, spill over effect of the ongoing conflict between israel and hamas mm -hmm. in the red sea area right what is happening in red sea area and what role india is playing in that area in that crisis so in the red sea area the houthis the shia militants uh, backed by iran in the yemen region are uh, attacking uh, the trade bound ships in the region uh, passing through the uh, red sea area and as a result uh, various countries such as usa and britain have retaliated uh, the drone strikes by these uh, houthi uh, rebels uh, in sirak area and on houthis uh, also and uh, the role of india in the uh, region has been with uh, in continuance with the operation sankalp in 2019 there have been various uh, indian navy ships deployed in the region Uh, which has been seen uh, with the successful attempt uh, by the indian navy in rescuing various hijacked uh, vessels also yesterday india uh, did intervene yes, uh, what was the name of indian uh, naval ship and which countries mary um, the crew they saved Uh, sorry sir i am not aware of the uh, the name but uh, like the crew shaped it was a iranian vessel uh, and the crew was uh, pakistani and another attempt uh, another attempt was also foiled in which uh, the uh, the people involved were sri lankans also okay thank you aditi thank you sir right uh, aditi uh, what yes. are your hobbies so my hobby is playing basketball and doing strength training okay right so you like to play basketball why do you think in india basketball perhaps is not as popular as perhaps say let's say us and other countries and european countries uh, so the first reason would be since it was adopted uh, based on the uh, american missionaries efforts it hasn't mm -hmm. been popular uh, because it needs a infrastructure such as basketball court which is not readily available in every small towns mm -hmm. uh, compared to cricket which can be played in gully cricket i would say mm -hmm. uh, the second would be uh, the lopsided uh, political will uh, mm -hmm. or administrative will allotted to various games such as cricket or uh, badminton i would say hasn't been done in case of basketball uh, and third would be the overall uh, sports budget is very much small which turns out to be uh, 24 per individual and uh, in that also the funding uh, towards the basketball has been neglected mm -hmm. okay right uh, you know these days a lot of gym accidents are happening right and yes, uh, i guess you also perhaps would use the gym right so yes, uh, what is the reason of increasing heart attacks in gyms these days so there are many reasons involved and uh, solely blaming gyms uh, for the increasing heart attacks is uh, not supported by scientific evidence uh, mm -hmm. the reasons involved are such as pre existing medical condition which mm -hmm. is not diagnosed at the right time uh, the second would be over straining uh, while uh, doing uh, the gym uh, exercises without any help or guidance from the trainers the mm -hmm. third would be the substance ab abuse such as drugs alcohol and even the steroids taken by various uh, gym goers uh, to increase their muscle mark, mass mm -hmm. and fourth will be the uh, the lifestyle uh, diseases like obesity 
because mainly the uh, like overweight people go to gym and, uh, and like so they are pro- more prone to heart attacks and etc okay you're saying that uh, see there's a increase in um, you know intake of psychotropic drugs and alcohol among youngsters these days yes. right uh, what's the what are the reasons for this and what as a at physio administrator and plus when you would be an administrator what would you do to maybe you know you know moderate the intake So the various reasons for the increasing amount of uh, the abuse uh, is many fold. Uh, the major would be the uh, relationship or the family uh, strained relationships. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second would be uh, the uh, like uh, bankruptcy uh, mm-hmm. or the uh, the economic reasons uh, for the abuse. Uh, so third has been the increasing unemployment crisis also linked with uh, the dejected youths in the country. Mm-hmm. and uh, the fourth would be the easily availability of the liquor also uh, so that increases the amount of alcohol intake mm-hmm. uh, and even the drugs drugs uh, so and uh, to, to the second question of yours uh, the major need, needed to tackle these uh, problems uh, mm-hmm. the as a sportsman i would employ uh, the sports as a major to tackle uh, these drug abuse as has been t- taken by haryana government in uh, the dhakar campaign Mm-hmm. uh so first would be sports uh so second would be a, the cross border uh, uh, uh like uh, uh, uh the cross border involvement of drugs uh, as been done in the uh, myanmar and the pakistan border so increasing surveillance surveillance is required so that uh, the drugs could be uh, stopped uh, from the cross border trade uh, so third would be the rehabilitation uh, rehabilitation centers have to be established so that uh, the youth Uh, which have been rehabilitated could be reintroduced uh, in the society okay right shota hi aditi ma'am good afternoon uttarakhand mein cloud burst hamesha se hi ek issue raha hai right uh, what do you exactly mean by a cloud burst a secondly are there any nda mein guidelines for the same Ma'am, according to uh, IMD, a event is uh, classified as cloud burst if the rainfall over a particular area, which is ten by ten kilometers square, uh, increases by at least ten centimeter, uh, and, th- and then uh, then the rainfall, uh, the excessive rainfall over an area is uh, classified as cloud burst event. Uh, and uh, yes, there are NDMA guidelines uh, for the classification and the uh, measures to be taken. uh for the cloud burst events what are the guidelines give me any three points uh yes ma'am the first would be early warning system because doppler radars could uh, detect the cloud uh, events uh, by at least 6 hours uh second would be uh, the uh, deployment of the forces so that people could be rescued when there has been the flooding uh, accompanied by cloud uh, cloud burst events and uh, th- uh third would be uh for the learning from the disasters such as the uh, uh, the cloud burst so uh, which is like the uh, which is involved as a result of the increasing climate change uh, so that capacity building of the uh, local community could be done uh, so that fu- in future uh, such events could be better tackled jab aap uttarakhand disaster management authority ki website pe jaate hain wo bhi kuch suggestions dete hain are you aware of the suggestions in terms of cloud bursts I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not aware. Okay, okay. Now, uh, Uttarakhand ki ham baat kar rahe hain. So, flash floods have always been an issue. So, glacial lake outburst floods is something that you should be aware of. So, ye kya hote hain glow? Ah, uh, ma'am, glow are the uh, flooding caused ah uh, by the ah uh, destruction of the damming of the morans, morans which are involved in the ah uh, glacial lakes ah uh, due to various reasons such as over flooding. or uh, the melting of uh, glaciers uh, so these are the glacial lake outburst floods okay recently there was a glow event in sikkim wahan par exactly kya hua hai man the south lonak lake uh, uh, which was a glacier lake uh, it it was uh, it was it, it was destructed uh, i'm not aware of the exact reason so that was the event which happened okay नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट आसाम आसाम फ्लड्स भी हर साल अपने आप में एक बहुत बड़ा इशू है तो ऑल हमें पता है कि ऐसा होना है है ना 
एज एन इन वी वी डू है ट्रेंड राइट बट स्टिल उसको हम कंट्रोल नहीं कर पा रहे तो क्या आपको लगता है कि आसाम की टोपोग्राफी का इसमें कोई रोल है Yes, ma'am. Topography is one of the factor, but we cannot neglect the cross-border uh, uh, involvement of China due to the Brahmaputra region. Uh, uh, as regard to the sharing of data in the monsoon uh, period. Okay, okay. Now, since we're talking about this uh, rainfall, right? अब आपको पता है कि मासेरान शरापुंजी हमेशा ही सबसे ज़्यादा rainfall से जुड़े रहते हैं. लेकिन still these places are prone to drought. Why is so? Uh, ma'am they are prone to drought uh, due to reasons such as the concentration of rainfall uh, during particular uh, period only such as southwest monsoon so and and hence uh, the rainfall is not evenly distributed throughout the year uh, and second would be uh, as uh, the the the, uh, the precipitation which is happening in the area is getting washed away and it's not getting accumulated in the forms of rainwater harvesting structures Okay, okay. Uh, you've done computer science, right? What do you mean by Internet of Things? Ma'am, Internet of Things is the virtual connection, uh, connected uh, network of various uh, uh, components, uh, be it applications, uh, which is distributed throughout the network. Uh, for example, if we take a case of our homes, uh, the the interconnection involved. in our watches to our laptops to our uh, phone screens so that can be uh, called as internet of things okay how do you differentiate between lan wan and vpn uh, yes ma'am uh, lan and wan are the uh, networks uh, which are distributed in a particular area but based on the scale of their application wan is wider than local area network Why, uh, whereas VPN, which is virtual private network, uh, it is used uh, using tunneling uh, protocol to hide your IP address and establish a secure connection while accessing a web browser. Okay, okay. Uh, I hope you're reading newspapers. I have one last question. Uh, European Union ne intent dikhaya hai ki they want to impose carbon border. Um, I think it's called carbon adjustment. border adjustment mechanism. Yeah. Mechanism. So I just want to understand. Agar ye 2026 se lagu hota hai, a India pe iska kya impact hai? B basic countries pe iska kya impact hai? yes ma'am uh, the mechanism is uh, used uh, as increasing the tax on the uh, carbon intensive products and hence uh, india being a major exporter of uh, products such as aluminium steel and uh, steel aluminium and other uh, products which are carbon intensive in their production process and hence it can uh, prove to be a disadvantage for indian exporters uh, in the european union and on the basic countries uh, which includes uh, brazil or uh, brazil uh, india south africa and china uh, since uh, these are developing countries and their technology hasn't been at par with the uh, carbon uh, carbon uh, controlling technology i would say so uh, they would be at a disadvantage uh, in this process okay okay thank you so much prerna ma'am hello aditi Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Aditi. Now the world has been witnessing wars after wars. You saw the Ukraine crisis in which a nuclear power like Russia was embroiled. Recently, you've also seen Iran launching strikes against Pakistan, which happens to be the only Islamic nuclear power in the world. In this scenario, do you think the doctrine of deterrence today is irrelevant? It's lost its importance. Not at all. and i won't say it has lost its its importance uh, because uh, the nuclear de deterrence still holds uh, as can be seen in uh, the russia ukraine war or the west asia war because countries are reluctant in uh, going for a full scale war or the direct war and hence are going for the proxy wars but yes there is a uh, i would say a uh, dent on the nuclear deterrence the level of nuclear de deterrence which has existed uh, before 
Right. Uh, now, uh, you, you've been a part of mock parliaments. Uh, now, in the winter session, there, there were 146 members of parliament who were suspended. Right. Uh, do you think that was a, a correct uh, uh, process to look at the functioning of parliament? And what does it speak about the state of democracy in India today? Uh, Ma'am, since 146 members were suspended, uh, it was a large number compared to the uh, the the amount of opposition in the parliamentary working of democracy. And hence, it was not, a, I would say, ideal solution to tackling uh, the misbehavior in the proceedings. And uh, it, uh, it definitely proved to be a dent in the working of the democracy since uh, the opposition role holds a huge importance in uh, ca creating a census and, uh, and, uh, and evolving good uh, debated legislation in the country. Okay. Now, Aditi, 33% uh, of reservation is being provided for women in parliament. Right? Do you think this will lead to genuine women empowerment and demands of women being reflected uh, in the union legislature? Do you think that that will be a consequence of the same? Yes, ma'am. As per various reports uh, or the success stories seen in the uh, the grassroots democracy of panchayats, I believe it would lead to a positive uh, impact over the gender uh, empowerment as well as an inclusive legislation uh, to be produced. Do you think only women can represent women's demands? Ma'am, I don't think only women can represent uh, women's demands but they can uh, represent women demands uh, in a better way since they have been uh, the active, uh, I would say the people who have experience, who have true experience of various problems faced by women during the whole life cycle. Right, but you know, uh, on the other hand, you had uh, the women and child minister who's a woman herself, who said that menstrual leave is really of no consequence. Do you agree with that uh, uh, opinion? Uh, yes, ma'am, I agree that uh, the menstrual leave is not required as of now, since it can backfire with the uh, with companies uh, recruiting women uh, less as compared to men due to an extra financial burden. Okay. Now, uh, you know, there was this review of the Indian economy, which has just come. And in the review, it stated that the era of hyper-globalization is over. Right? Do you agree with the same? Is hyper-globalization done and away with? Ma'am, I won't say ki it has done, it has been done away with or it has died. But yes, there is a, a decrease in the scale of hyper-globalization uh, between countries due to the rise of deglobalization trends and hyper-nationalism. So is, is globalization still alive or is hyper-globalization still alive? I would say uh, globalization is still alive, but hyper-globalization, uh, as seen before, uh, is has suffered considerable damage. So that means that hyper-globalization is on the decline, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what is globalization? And globalization is the uh, slowing of globalization uh, with the amount of the trade involved between the countries. Are we trade in an of globalization? Um, yes, ma'am. We are witnessing globalization. Why would you say the same? Uh, ma'am, uh, especially after COVID, as uh, the reports uh, presented by uh, WTO, uh, there was a considerable decline in the uh, the scale of trade. Uh, maybe uh, so we are witnessing globalization uh, globalization uh, with the increasing uh, border uh, controls and uh, the countries turning inward with their uh, supply chains. Okay. Aditi, what is French shoring? Uh, Ma'am, French shoring is when uh, countries turn to their uh, friendly, uh, friendly uh, bilateral countries uh, for the increasing amount of their global supply chains. For example, uh, the Western countries, especially USA, is uh, under French shoring is turning towards friendly countries such as India uh, away from China. 
can you give me an instance you know, you're you're someone from computer science background so looking at that sector itself can you give me an instance of a certain sector in which this friend shoring has been practiced uh, yes ma'am uh, the sector such as electronics and telecommunication uh, which has made india as the second largest manufacturer of mobile phones what is the fab for uh, ma'am fab for is the alliance of usa south korea japan and taiwan which are cooperating uh, for the uh, coordinated supply of various critical minerals involved in the semiconductor uh, manufacturing and other sect sectors also is that also. an instance of french friend shoring ah uh, yes ma'am it's an instance of french shoring thank you aditi thank you ma'am okay aditi so now time for feedback how did you think you fared ma'am regarding the uttarakhand sector uh, sector i think i should need to revise more and apart from that i think i was okay -ish. yes correctly assessed but not need to revise more you were just afraid to give any opinion at all just afraid to give any opinion why should you be like that i don't understand it's always you can always give two sides of the picture and you got yourself into a mess there otherwise yes you i mean i initially i thought you were just not there but then as i heard your question, your discussion along the way you were very good really very good confident mm -hmm. precise you were so well informed in many sectors so uh, but then a winner is not just one who is knowledgeable a winner is somebody who is able to take difficult decisions right yes ma'am also newspaper reading could be better the budget is coming so therefore please look at economic newspapers also please look at all the budget with the lens of uttarakhand with the lens of religion with the lens of women you know everything that is there in your daf then uh, yes, i did not ask you about haridwar but haridwar you can get questioned you know kumbh why 12 years why haridwar what about the ganga uh, you know along the, you can get lots of questions on that hmm? temples yes, there etc etc why their bhumi things to be prepared then uh, uttarakhand post bifurcation of the state and after a pre and post has it improved has it not improved unemployment has really gone up so prepare that huh? have a balanced thing plus minus on both sides because there may be somebody with a strong view this side a strong view that side now uh, ucc uh, it is a fact that they have not made it public yes ma'am in fact one of the people who's on the committee that has uh, given the report when the government is taking it he texted me and told me that you know madam we are doing this I said, "What are the contents?" He says, "You will know on fifth." I said, "How funny! Shouldn't you have the known?" He said, "We did two and a half lakh consultations, but the fact is that only on fifth it will be known." So you see, you must uh, study UCC in the light of what what needs to be there and what what is there after. It's it's broadly construed as anti-Muslim, but actually that is not so. It depends on what we can choose. You are doing, for example, Hindu and United families have tax benefits. which others don't have so is it going away no they will not touch it i'm sure so you need to see you know tax benefits inheritance marriage laws education lots of sectors you, when it comes through look at the lens of all the gamut and then see what has gone into it and what not because the content of it is important you can't just say it's good it's bad you must know what's going into it whereas the the need for a uniform civil code throughout the country nobody can deny that but what you put in there and what you target that is the important part right so yes, prepare that and uh, assam and gujarat are also going to do it yes so uh, it's obviously a political tool but you should not get to politics but look at the content on both sides then this madrasa business i thought you got yourself into a complete mess difficult question i asked you i mean i i cornered you on that but uh, uh, I mean, then I I took the opposite viewpoint. I said, "Why are you not the good doctor, Kuran?" I mean, I would perhaps have looked at it that way. That one, I would have said first of all that I do not know enough about it because there's just an item in the newspaper that the four new model mother cells. So if you read it up, it's good. It's a good idea. What other modernization? I mean, if you're opening up to uh, uh, to other influences rather than tight religious influences, it's a good idea. And if they're doing Ram, if they're going to do it. 
certain tenets of governance. Not a bad idea. So, but you need to know more about it. No. Similarly, if then I I cornered you on saying, Ki, what about the Quran? So that is clear that if there are uh, uh, lessons from the Quran that is taught, eh, it should be done. I mean, we study the Bible. We study. Uh, if I studied in a convent, I studied about the Bible. So if there is a good thing in any religion, we study the teachings of Nanak. So it should be taught. Why not? Uh, yes, now, uh, then this road business, that was a complete, what shall I say? Then I gave you a structure for it also. Even that structure you didn't adhere to. See, the thing is, I mean, you don't have to be so afraid of the, being anti-government, anti-this, anti-that. The fact of the matter is that the Chardham Highway is a disaster. They're blasting it. There is no other technology available, by the way. I don't know the hand-picking and what you're talking about. They are blasting. There is no better technology. If there is a better technology, you should certainly research it. I'm also looking for that. And it's a, it's a fragile mountain. So now the highway is already... What they've done, they've given to hundreds of contractors. So in pieces, like three kilometers is done. Now four kilometers is a mess. Then three kilometers is done. Then two kilometers is a mess. And the guys who've done the upar wala, the niche wala have done first. Upar wala do later. And now the rocks fall in the niche wala. So there are issues of design, the issues of implementation. Right? Implementation issues you can straight away talk about and say this needs to be improved. There's no criticism of anybody. Right? You need to know what they are. Issues of implementation. There are long, long uh, two to our um, uh, traffic jams now because they've blasted on both sides. Of, it's a pile of rubble and there's just a one way little 10, 12 feet of space left. That's what they've done. So now what you need to say is that I would, I would have said, it's a, it's a subjective call that now that this is done, of course, you can't undo it. But what you can do now, it should be quickly looked at that which is absolutely essential and that which is not. Cut your losses, so to speak. Certain places yes, you need widening. And the, you know, there are four, four plus one, four Chardhams and one to Mansarovar. Okay, last one. There are five places basically, Chardham road widening. So the fifth one, which is extreme east, the Gunji one, that really needs it because that's a difficult area. That's the area claimed by Nepal. Limpia Dura, you know, I hope you know about that. Yes, ma'am. Kalapani Limpia Dura. Kalapani dispute. Yes, and this, this, the, the reason of the dispute is that Kalapani has been seen as the head stream, the source of the Mahakali which was a dividing line as per the Treaty of Sagoli. Indian yes, Army is stationed further up on that Kalapani route at, Lim at Lipu Lake Pass. Yes, where yes. We crossed over into Tibet for Kailash Mansarovar, where now Prime Minister Modi said a road will be made and standing on Lipu Lake, you can see Kailash Parvat. That's the advantage. On Indian territory, you can see it. And there's Om Parvat and uh, Adi Kailash and all that along the way. So they have said that is not the head stream. The head stream is far west, which is Limpia Dhura. So everything east of that goes to Nepal. That is what the river also has changed its course a bit. That is a feature of this field. So that road is needed. But the other four, the government should take a look at all of them and see that which is really essential for widening. Otherwise, cut their losses and leave it where it is. Second, the other viewpoint is also so, that it's a kacha pahar. So in four or five years, it will settle down. That's what it said from the government yes, side. It will settle down. Right now, the destruction is huge. Then uh, the tourist thing. I certainly feel you should you should know what is the tourism, how many tourists are coming in, how much is religious tourism, how much is this uh, adventure tourism. You must know all that. You must know the figures, right? Yes, ma'am. And you must know what the Chardham Highway also the details of the roads, kitna kilometer yaha, kitna maha, kitna maha, for the Chardhams and for the Kailash route. So you must know about this, and then you form your view. My view is, you know, last year, last or year before. The day uh, France announced that they will restrict uh, 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 tourists into Louvre because Mona Lisa is getting damaged. Uh, Mona Lisa is a measly little painting. If you go and see, they're so disappointed. And it's in a frame. And you have to watch it outside an enclosure about 25 feet away. But the, they, are, they are planning, they were restricting tourists. So that day, Mr. Pushkar Singh Dhami also announced restriction on tourists. Then they had to roll it back under pressure of the pandas and all. So there is no harm in saying district, but you should know how many tourists are really coming in and how much is the carrying capacity, right? That's then um, two, then third of the forestation, yes, but it doesn't go when the road is going on, no? Then other constructions. They have asked about demolition of something like, I think, 150 structures in Joshimat. But it's not just Joshimat, it's everywhere. Joshimat has come to light because of the, uh, the Chamoli uh, this, uh, NPPC tunnel last year. But it's sinking everywhere. Dharthula is sinking, Nenital is sinking, Rishikesh is sinking, Kanprayag is sinking, everywhere it's sinking. So basically that study here does need to be done. And 
uh, unsafe structures and 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 uh, you know you have development authorities so then they should have a master plan very quickly and enforce it if this is all a legal thing you can say they should have a master plan and enforce it that master plan should take into account the carrying capacity and that should be done say in a year within a year and limited time frame so these That's kind nice. of suggestions are positive somebody who understands this issue is not ducking it right and they're not so overly critical of the government also and development works also similarly they need to be seen i mean there is power generation or there is roads and all that stuff but only that which is absolutely essential should be done otherwise they should be not be done now they are making rope ways all the temples kedarnath rope way ye rope way rope everywhere rope ways and the power is going to come down i mean i'm i'm worried i hope kedarnath doesn't come down but that's the way it's going just now they are making four three four storied frame structures and every other day the avalanche comes down because the the carbon is going on the mountain kedarnath and the snow is coming down so study this in depth that which should be allowed and that which should not be allowed that which should be allowed with restrictions right if you get a good reply to this one this is a winner in your book because everybody outside uttarakhand is worried about this right then your other things i guess a lot of been covered you will be asked i could not ask psir but there would be separation of powers independence of judiciary then that section the laws that have been passed the it act how it's curtailing right to information telecom act then those criminal acts you know, study them and prepare them properly you, know, you prepared your many i was wondering it upi you didn't talk about you didn't talk about how we handled covid how we put that what is that app called i forget what is it called covid, COVID app and arogya setu Yes, we did a wonderful, terrible job in the first half of COVID, and a wonderful job in the second half. The vaccine outreach and the COVID, and you know, all that was a wonderful job done. But we had a very bad start. Then, um, mock parliament. Of course, I think you were asked already. Parliament procedures. You should be familiar with parliamentary procedures. You don't make eye contact. You need to make eye contact. You look up and down when you're thinking. Please, it's more, much more effective communication if you make eye. But you were a Transformed a person in the first half of the interview and the last part. You were really very good in the last part. Mm -hmm. So that the trick is, if you prepare well, you will do really very well. So when is your interview? I'm thirteenth of March. Thirteen. You have lots of time. So I would suggest that uh, are you doing more mocks just now? Uh, yes, ma'am. This is my third mock, and for the, the next maybe. month, I have planned it on every set Sunday. Sunday. My suggestion suggestion is. the next mock you should do 10 days after the budget so that you have prepared the budget properly understood the budget prepared it and then you get questions asked on a range of issues and yes. there will be sundays fine after that women's issues i could not touch your strength training how does it equip you in self defense and so many women's issues now mm -hmm. you know all aspects women's laws women's bills women's legislation uh women sex ratios all the indicators etc uttarakhand where it fares incidentally there was an indicator on which uttarakhand you know sterilizations were very very good in uttarakhand especially the hill areas they used to be really good a country a railway they can ask you should it be there should it not be there it's also a railway of destruction so you formulate your you prepare in depth on all this if you you will get at least one or two questions on uttarakhand one question on women one on it probably Uh, and yeah, I mean, your three, you get three, four of these. So otherwise, if you prepare this, nothing. You've not opted for any police force. Is there a medical issue or just an attitude issue? Ma'am, there is a medical issue. Okay, then it's fine. No more questions asked. But if you prepare, nothing can stop you. All the best. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Siti, you are a good candidate, and uh, you should be able to do well. Follow the advice given by. uh chair person uh except that i will suggest that uh, just wanted to know for curiosity you have done a bachelor of engineering in computer sciences and msc economics what is this combination yes, so it's a dual degree course uh, of 5 year which is provided okay. by bits pilan so uh, msc is in economics only yes sir so there could be question on economics also yes yes you know because apart from computer science they will ask you questions on economics especially the budget would have been president or the vote on accounts would have been presented uh, tomorrow so there will be questions on that so you better uh, prepare yourself and uh, then as madam said on women's issue on uh, uttarakhand 
bound to be questions uh, there. Then uh, India's because foreign service is your second choice. Yes, sir. Second uh, option. So there will be question on foreign policy. Uh, India's relations with its neighbors, Maldives, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, uh, China, Pakistan, then, uh, you know, India's relation with US, Canada, we are having problems. Then um, world affairs, then elections, Bangladesh had, Pakistan is going to have, we are going to have, then America will have. So this, they call it an election year. So you better prepare on that. You have sufficient time. Uh, read which newspapers do you read? Sir, I read the Hindu and Indian Express. Okay, that's good enough. But read one economics paper also because your degree is in economics. So better you read either Mint or uh, Economic Times or Business Line, whatever is available to you. You must read that paper because, uh, and they may ask you some question because you worked as a software engineer also in Cisco. So some industry related question may also be asked because this is one service industry where India is doing well and we are running a lot of uh, foreign exchange from uh, IT. Things. So there could be questions on that. So prepare that also. Okay. Yes, sir. With that, I think you should be able to do well. Thank you, sir. Right. Uh, you know, uh, just Aditi, just do a one-on-one, -on -one, right? So schedule a one-on-one -on -one and we discuss the other parts like the PSIR, Right, special one on one for you. Other than that, I think uh, um, we are good to go, and I believe that you will do really well. Right? Thank you, sir. Absolutely.